Hello and welcome to the first video in 2D Plus One's Becoming a Game Artist video series. In this video we're going to go over the basic 3ds Max user interface and we're going to start modeling a simple object using some basic tools. Let's get started. These four windows you see here are what are called viewports. The front top and left viewports show the front top and left of your scene. Now these are flat on the X and Y axis, whereas the perspective viewport is on the X, Y, and Z or Z axis. You can move this one around in 3D space where a lot of your, uh, your editing and modeling will be done. Okay, so you might have a view cube here. I'm going to bring that up. We're going to get rid of this and use hotkeys to move around our scene instead. And the way to get rid of it is control alt v or go to view, view cube, and untick it. This, you can do the same thing with the steering wheel that you might have down here. Alright, the hotkeys we're going to use are the middle mouse key to pan. In the perspective viewport, alt and the middle mouse key to move it around in 3D space. And scrolling in and out to zoom in and out. Now if I were to hold down alt and the middle mouse key in say the front viewport, it would switch to an orthogonal view which is a really sloppy way to model so we're not going to be doing that. So to turn it back, I'm just going to click orthogonal and go down to front and click it. Alright, so those are our hotkeys for moving around in our viewports. Now we're going to go over to the control panel. This is where all of our uh, modeling and editing tools are found. I'm going to create one of those wooden crates you see in, in movies on pirate ships. So I'm going to start by creating a cylinder. And I'm going to hold down my left mouse key and drag out the radius. Once I find something I like, I'll release and move my mouse key, or use my, I'm sorry, move my mouse up and down to create height. All right, and this isn't really looking like the barrel that I want, so I'm going to edit it a little bit more in these parameters right here. Now, say I wanted to edit it uh, more by hand, I'm going to click Alt W to make my perspective viewport full screen, and then I'm going to right click scale. Now I can uh, do a little bit more, I can scale a little bit more freely. But say I do something I don't like. I can click Control Z to edit undo. That's another hotkey. Okay, and if I'd like to redo something, I can click Control Y. That's your edit undo and edit redo. Alright, so I'm gonna find a shape that I like, that looks good. And I'm gonna go to modify. Right now we're in create geometry standard primitives. I'm gonna go to modify. So now I can edit this cylinder alone. I'm gonna write, well, now before I do that, um, let's look at our wireframe. So if we click Alt W and go back to our four viewports, you'll see that uh, the front top and left viewport shows something a little bit different than the perspective viewport. This is our wireframe. The wireframe is these edges that make up polygons. Now, in game art, you're gonna wanna keep low poly models, but you will be using normal maps to make them look high poly and be doing high poly editing to make those normal maps. We'll get into that more later. But as of now, we're gonna keep this model low poly by deleting some of the height segments, I'm just going to push down here, and you'll see that now I just have long these long polygons instead of all of these individual ones. These squares are the squares are our polygons. So, so yeah, and I'm turn the sides down a little bit. Now maybe I want to see my polygons in my perspective viewport. I'm just going to click where it says smooth highlights and go down to edge faces. Now I can see them a little bit better. Make that full screen. Okay, and now I'm going to turn my cylinder into an editable poly. So I'm going to right click on cylinder and go down to editable poly. Now uh, the barrels in those movies on those ships are usually a little bit fatter in the center. So to do that I'm going to click edge here and select one of these edges. Now I want to select all the edges around here but instead of clicking them individually I can click ring to ring my edge. And the next thing I want to do is create some edge loops. Now I could scroll all the way down click create but instead I'm going to drag out my control panel one just by going to the very edge of it and dragging and then scroll down to connect so it's automatically there and I'm going to click the settings box next to connect and then turn my segments to two unpinch them a little bit so the pinch controls how close they are to each other and the slide controls uh, how up and down they move I'm not really sure the words for that um, so I'm going to make my pinch a little bit wider and then I'm going to scale this out starting to look a little bit more like a barrel next thing I'm going to do is select this edge and hold down control and select another one. If I were to just select without control, you'll see that it deselects the last edge that I clicked. So if I hold down control, I can select multiple edges. The next thing I'm gonna do is click ring. I'm gonna go to the settings box next to connect again. 
I'm gonna pinch them together a little bit more. These are gonna be the metal bars that wrap around our, our uh, barrel and click okay. Now I wanna select all of the polygons around these, or in between these two edge loops. I could select each individual polygon holding down control, but instead I'm gonna do something a little bit quicker. I'm gonna click Alt W, go to my front viewport, Alt W, hold down control and just drag out um, this box by holding down my left mouse key. Alt W, Alt W, okay. And now I'm going to go down to extrude under edit polys, click the settings box, and scale it out a little bit. Now, you'll see that this is making it look really crazy. That's not what we want. I'm gonna click local normal. It'll extrude it out instead of up and down. All right, and I'm going to scale it down a little bit, just make it look a little bit more the way I want it to. All right, now if I take off edge faces, uh, it's looking a little bit more like a barrel, but I think it needs to be a little bit fatter in the middle. So I'm just gonna select one of these edges. We'll go to edge faces, select an edge, ring, and connect and we're just going to create one this time and we're going to scale it there we go that's looking like a barrel all right when you're doing game art to keep your uvw map from being screwed up and that's something we're going to work with a little bit later we don't want any polygons that have more than four sides and so four sided and three sided polygons are what, are what we're trying to keep now you'll see that all these polygons have four sides but this top one here has tons of sides what is it 17 so we're going to get rid of that just by select, going to select polygon and clicking it and then click delete and same thing with the bottom one. Get rid of that. All right. And now we're going to make a bunch of tries instead of that large polygon. So what I'm going to do is click this edge right here and click ring. Oops. I'm sorry. Ring selects the ring. I'm going to control Z and click loop. So now I did a loop around the top and then I'm going to hold on control and go down to border and it, that automatically will loop my edges in an open gap. So now I have the top and bottom selected. I'm going to scale them in. I'm going to use this this part of the scale that'll scale them um, flat on the X and Y. So I'm going to scale them in while holding Shift. Now you might, if you didn't hold Shift, you're going to get something like this. You're going to click Control Z to get out of that. Hold down Shift and you'll create new polygons. I'm going to scale them in really tight like this. So it looks like we have a uh, a bunch of tries here, right? But they're not connected, which is a really sloppy way of modeling. So we're going to scale those in a little bit more and go to Vertex. We're going to select these vertexes, make, our, make sure our bottom ones are selected too. All right. And now I'm going to weld them together. So we're going to go down here under Edit Vertexes and Weld. And now we have created a bunch of tries instead of that polygon with all those different sides. All right, now the last thing I'm going to do is click Polygon here, by angle, and click the top. Hold down control and click the bottom. Now you see that I'm selecting by angle instead of a single polygon. And then I'm going to scroll down to inset and click the settings box next to that. And you'll see that I just made one big edge loop all the way around here. Click OK. And now I'm going to extrude and move it down a little bit. It's looking like a barrel. And then I think I'll scale these in a little bit more. And, and there we go. There's our barrel. Now, it's a little bit too rough up here for me. I want that to be smooth. So what I'm going to do is, I'm sorry, got to turn off by angle. I'm going to select all of these edges. Okay, and then I'm going to click, under polygon smooth groups, I'm going to click, um, let's click one. And you'll see that they're now smoothed out. Smooth groups are really important. These already have smooth groups automatically applied to them. But if I take those off, you'll see that the uh, polygon looks a lot more hard. So... Yeah, here's our barrel. Um, in the next video, we're going to get a little bit more into game art instead of just the basic 3ds Max user interface. And uh, we'll be creating normal maps really soon here. So I'll talk to you guys later.